Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And welcome back, everybody. It is a part of our lives, and it's never easy to deal with. There's always lots of questions surrounding it. People go to psychics, mediums to get some insight, maybe some closure. I'm talking about when someone in your life passes. And we're going to look at that today from the eyes of a medium. And she's got a lot of insight. I've got a lot of questions for her. Leah DiNapoli is with us. Welcome back. How are you? Thank you, Steve. Thank you. I'm very well, I guess. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. And I uh, I know just seconds before we jumped in here, you yep. you had told me that that your dog passed within the last week. I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah, thank you. And uh, you'll have to forgive me already if I get a little bit choked up or teary-eyed already. <laughs> Oh, oh I, I, I get it. Um, and as soon as you say it, I think of my cat and that was four years ago and it's brutal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I gotta tell you, I, I feel like he's still around. Yeah, they're definitely around. I'm still waiting to hear from my, from my girl. Um, interesting enough. I know we talked about this prior was that I usually have dreams of people who are going to pass or things that are going to happen in my life uh, months prior to them happening. And the last time I lost a pet six months prior, I dreamt of her passing. It was really obvious that she was going to pass um, and how it happened. And about a month ago, I dreamt of my dog. My dog came to me and she... Um, she was next to me in the front door and we opened the front door and she showed me another dog. And I was like, Oh, okay. This is, must be my new great Dane coming. But unbeknownst to me, I just wasn't ready to accept that my dog has gotten old and she was going to pass. So I've completely erased this from my, my prophet, my prophetic knowing. Right. And so um, she she showed me this dog and I, I went up to this beautiful new great Dane and I was trying to remove the plastic off its head. Like someone had put plastic over her eyes. And I thought, my God, who did this to you? And I'm trying to get it off. And I realized, wait, this, this is really the amniotic sac. I knew this in my dream, right? This dog is in utero somewhere. And once I realized that my dog in my dream, the one that was still present with me ran on the side of me and ran out the front door and ran up steps over a bridge. And I remember panicking and saying, come back, Piper, come back. And uh, I was panicking because I thought it was out my front door. She's going to get hit by a car. Somebody needs to stop her. And of course, you know, the dream ends and I wake up and I was like, wow, that was so real. What's going on? And my husband woke up and I said, I said, Jim, you know, we're going to get another dog. And he said, what do you mean? I said, oh, well, Piper just brought us to this new dog. And so we're going to have a new puppy with her and it's going to be so great. And voila, a month later, which was last week, um, my dog ran out the front door um, from being here in the morning. And that was the last time she was in my house. <laughs> and it was oh, awful. so sorry. Um, so one of the signs your pets give you is they bring you to new animals because I think you're contracted prior to coming here. And, um, I just couldn't imagine, I can't imagine my life without her. Um, but I have to accept it. So mm, I'm so sorry. Go. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. But, um, yeah, I was, mm. I was kind of angry too, because I was like, you know, I always dream when my pets are going to pass on or family members, and I kind of have a warning and I didn't get one this time, but I did. And I had kind of put the dream off because I couldn't accept it. You know, she really went quickly. We were together in the morning. And by that afternoon, I think she waited for my husband to get home from a, a short trip. And that was that. Wow. Yeah. Um, I <laughs> get no words. Yeah, it's just, uh... I just. I think I wanted to to talk to the listeners about that and say that even though I'm a medium and with all that I know and with all I've learned about consciousness going on, I mean, I have it proved to me every single day. 
um, that we are not immune to loss and loss hurts incredibly. And um, I feel like I have a hole in my soul. And that's how I describe death is a hole in your soul. I mean, it's a kick in the gut. And um, every time and every subsequent loss that I've ever had, grief is so difficult. And it's as much closure as I bring to people and as much healing as I bring, I feel the hole. And I've, it's immense. And it's so hard, so hard. I have lots of questions, but I also want to share with you because I think it's it's um, coincidental or not, and I don't know what the pieces are. And we've talked before, and <laughs> weird pieces have come together. Oh. Um, it wasn't last week when your dog passed. It was the week before. My son just started driving, got him oh. a, an old SUV, and he hit a dog. Oh my gosh! I'm like so, so sorry. like the. It's weird that we're talking about this. Um, dog didn't make it. It wasn't his fault. I, I was going to meet him for dinner and uh, I, I, he just like emergency. Uh, and I'm like, what's up? And he I called him. He was crying. I'm like, I'm three minutes away. I'll be there. And the worst. Yeah. I mean, you know, especially 17. So it was just like a, yeah, at any age, it's at any age. I, I, absolutely. And, My and 17 year old came with me when we put our, I called him up and said, you have to come to the emergency room. I miss, I missed the beginning of that. Who came with you? I said, my 17 year old as well came with me to the emergency room. Um, I called him and said, you have to meet us here now. Like none of us were expecting this. And right. it was, wow. We were like the wall of whalers in the vet's office. Oh, of course. <laughs> I mean, I, mean you know. I, I, I just, it, I, I, it means nothing, but maybe something that we're talking about this. And then that happened in my life, like a week before. It uh, does. So it does. So what I'm going to tell you actually is even as a medium, what did I do? I got online and I'm searching for somebody who could bring me my dog back because I can't do it for myself. I can do everyone else. I was, this is so frustrating for me. I have maybe once or twice, but in my dreams, I have my family come to me all the time and my in-laws and my friends and people who have passed come in my dreams. But I think there's a block for me um, when I'm awake, because it's too emotional for me to connect with them, um, even in meditation, um, it happens rarely. So, um, so do I have this clear that you're looking for a medium to, to connect for connect you because you can't, dog. and I, and why you can't, I totally get, it. I totally get, well, it. it's like, you're too close to it. it. Too close to it. And interesting enough. So I'm going to tell you about your son. I found a medium online. I didn't, I didn't get on with her yet because I just can't, I'm too emotional still, um, who resonated with what I want, what I needed. And she was speaking on YouTube about losing pets. And she even spoke about if your pet dies suddenly being hit by a vehicle or something that you didn't expect coming, don't feel like it's your fault. And don't feel bad. There are no accidents. Like I needed to hear that. There are no accidents. The dog needed to go at that time. And God creates a scenario. Yeah. And there you go for your son. So yeah. it's, not, it's not anyone's fault. And and the biggest thing is to just not allow your pet to suffer. And I also have to put this out to the, your listeners is not to leave your pet when they're passing. Like they would not leave you. If you were passing of a heart attack or sick, they only want to be with you and give you love. And so don't leave them alone when they're passing, be with them as much as it hurts. They wouldn't leave you too. So surround them with love, let them know how much you care about them. And mm, wow. Yeah. And I know it wasn't my son's fault. You know, oh, even absolutely. though he's a new driver, it was dark. Um, dog was dark. And even there was a woman there that was trying to corral the dog because the dog was just, you know, running. Uh, um, and it was, on, you know, very, it was on, on the side of the road. You couldn't even see. Um, but yeah, interesting. And I guess that comes back to, we've, we've talked before. There's a plan. This is, you know, in life, there is a plan. We don't know what the plan is. And that's what maybe, you know, the plan for, your dog. Yeah. I, and the plan is not 
always fair for us. Like well, my yeah. sister used to say, fair is a four letter word. The other four letter word that we don't say that starts with F, right? Yeah. It's yeah. It seems like it's not fair, but who knows? Maybe that dog that he accidentally hit, maybe it was going to pass of a tragic sickness or linger. And, you know, who knows? I, I don't know. My dog looked at me that morning and I kept saying to her, what's going on? Like she looked at me with eyes of a child longing for like, I got to go, mom, I'm sorry. And I knew it. I knew it. And I, I kept saying to her, why are you looking at me like that? Like it was, it was scaring me. She knew already. And she knew the month before I had a dream, you know? Mm. Wow. Um, do you think, well, you said it's part of a soul contract that they come back in the form of another animal or can I think they can. Of course, I don't know everything. It's things other people have told me. So I had a woman tell me that prior to us coming here, we know our parents. And I've, I've heard this, you know, we pick our parents. We I've heard that our, too. We pick our life and our soul family, right? Things we need to work out and work with and learn. And we do this with people we love across the veil before we come. Um, apparently, we have contracts with pets as well. And I could tell you every dog I've ever had in my life, their personality and who they were and what they brought to me at that time was exactly what I needed then. And my vet used to say, oh, you know, you don't find a dog. You don't find an animal. They find you. And I truly believe that. And I and I think my dog knew it was her time. And I kind of knew too, but I was ignoring the whole thing. Didn't want to see it. Didn't want to face it. And, you know, my husband and I are devastated. Our house is like lost its life right now. <laughs> it's really yeah. amazing what they bring, you know. I You said what I was going to say. And I, the the cat that I I referenced that, that passed four years ago, um, I got another one last year. It's the same yeah. cat. It's the same cat. Yes, and that I've learned as well. They can come back if they choose to in another another body, and so yeah. uh, and they I said when that happens, you'll know it's the same pet. You'll know it by certain. It'll have its own personality but it will have same traits and you will know right off the bat if it's that same pet or not i know <laughs> i know it sounds ridiculous but nope. it was an orange tabby uh, named maestro who i rescued and yeah. i got another rescue last year but really more of a my daughter moved with me and it was more of a comfort thing yeah <laughs> and, and she needed it and i needed it um yeah. a lot going on and it's the same cat same personality, mushy, sweet. Like it just like I walk in, I'm like, Rocco, come here, Rocco, give me a kiss. Jumps up on the counter. He's like, vroom, 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 kissing Oh me. my like, goodness. Every single time. And he's just, yeah, that, that that's him. Like he's sweet. You can pick him up. He doesn't really care. Um, so then a couple of months after that, I got another cat just because I wanted to. Um <laughs> And that one was a little standoffish, but now that one's mushy too. And it's, I, I, in my mind, it might sound crazy, but I, I feel like I pick good pets or like you just said, they pick me pick you. and you. But it's your energy that resonates with them. That's what I'm saying. I, they, and I never realized that. For both sides. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I pick up on like, that. I, I have a dog and he is amazing now and we're all going to say yeah our dog's great and everything um yeah. now some dogs are a little bit of a challenge here and there and um mm -hmm. he's just like, like i don't know you know you can get a cat you never know what you're going to get sometimes they're, <laughs> yeah, sure. they're, like, what, they're, they're the reason why people don't like cats yeah. um minor minor dogs but I, I i i'm totally with you that they can um show up in the form of another animal um especially when needed. And, and he was needed. <laughs> he was definitely needed. And he knew that. So he came back. That's what I'm saying. Right. And even I want to share, I want to share with you while we're talking about this one cat maestro, mm -hmm. I spoke to an animal communicator about a year ago and she, you know, communicates in spirit and in person. She's not really a psychic. She doesn't call herself a psychic, but she's intuitive. She's definitely intuitive. Okay. And 
she said to me about this cat that had passed. Uh, she goes, he's a bolter. He's like, Bing! he's out of there. And I was like, I'm all I know. And then I'm like, oh, he was. And you could say that about any animal. You might be right. You might not. He was to the point where once he bolted into a sunroom, I closed the door. It was summertime. That sunroom is like 120 degrees. Oh. And I remember walking past the glass and seeing him. And he's like, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God. I ran, opened the door, gave him water, cooled him down. I was I was worried that that, that could have been it. Um, but he was a bolter. I mean, she was right that he, that's what he does. He was just like mushy, you know, out of nowhere. Um, okay. he, I don't know. I, I think she's got something. Because, you know, a couple of other things she said as well. And they weren't really too generic. Um, yeah. I mean, they, they, they're, well, they're a soul. Everything has a soul. Everything is a breath of God. Right. And so you can, I, I bring animals through all the time when I'm doing readings and I love it. And honestly, I have to say, I think I'm looking forward to a little bit more of it because um, hmm. feeling how I feel, I love helping people, but man, yeah. your animals are with you 24 um, seven and not to renege on anybody's person of course you know i've i've had it but my my dog was with me all day you know all day 24 7 walking every day everything like my constant companion no matter what that's not like a lot of people are even if they're in your house you know I, a few I, hours I, a day the the animals are there so i'm looking forward to doing more of that i'm looking hmm. forward i read for a girl um at a, a conference once for a class and uh I remember the only the only soul to come through was her dog. And I was like, geez, did you just lose a dog? And he's like one of those canine dogs. They're following you. You know, he has a he has a, a harness on. You know, they're almost like those drug dogs that kind of hang with the police. And she said, well, yeah, I'm a police officer and I was a canine police officer and I lost wow. my dog two weeks ago. And he was right there. It was the first time I brought in an animal and that was a couple of years. And I, I love doing that because mm -hmm. they are such a warm part of our life, aren't they? Now we're talking the passing of animals. If, if it's a passing of a human, I've heard, and I don't know if this is true. Tell me that if somebody has just passed, you shouldn't get a reading. You got to give it time. Then others say, no, nah, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. I don't know, but I'm just sharing what I heard. So I would say it doesn't really matter because I've had both. Okay. But I think it's up to the medium doesn't run the show. She, she tries or he tries to do the best she can for the person, the sitter. However, spirit does. And so if your person who's passed or your animal who's passed is ready to come through, they will come through. It's really up to spirit. It's not sometimes people really want to, I really want to talk to my sister who's passed, blah, blah, blah. And I can't, I can't connect with them. I can get a little bit, but they're, you know, they've been past five years. They're just not ready. Or one that's just passed yesterday. You know, I just connected a mom with her brother. I'm sorry, a sister with her brother who passed suddenly this week. And, you know, that was only a couple of days and he was there. So Wow. Who knows? And anything is possible. I don't know the rules really. I, I wish, I think when I pass, I'll know all the rules and I'll be able to <laughs> do things a little bit easier, but um, all things are possible with spirit and God wants you to feel love and they're going to do what's best for you. So I tell people sometimes I can't guarantee if your sister will come through today, I'm going to try to connect with them, but they know better. And so if, it's going to be too emotional or too much for that person. And they don't feel that their person is ready. Sister won't come in unless they feel like they can help that person. So it's all about love and what they can bring for us too. So, and I've heard that many times too, where the message will come through when it needs to. And mm -hmm. if, if it, and, and if it doesn't, there's a reason it didn't be it. Maybe you're not ready. Um, maybe there's something more important that you need to hear from maybe another relative, wh whatever it might be. That's absolutely correct. They know better than we do. And so 
I just want to be the clearest channel for whatever needs to come through. Spirit knows what needs to come through, you know, way more than I do. I just want to do what's the best for my client. How do you know when it's an animal that's coming through? Oh, you see it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I don't see it outright. I wish I did. Um, actually, my dog that just passed would see animals. I think we talked about that. I somehow had some dog come with me after a reading and my dog chased an unknown thing around my house until she took it outside. Um, uh, so animals do see spirits, but you see it just like I see a person or would see your mom if she came through during a reading. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the person usually comes through and then all of a sudden there's an animal there, right? And you get the animal's essence and you get what they did together and they they show you riding in the truck with their buddy, you know, or yeah. they like the beach. And so um, I had a, I had a dog who was in the woman's um, hospital bed as she was passing. <clears throat> the dog had already passed, but it showed me that it was in the bed giving the person who was passing comfort. Wow. Yeah, it was wow. pretty amazing, pretty beautiful. You know, I I often when my my own dog was passing last week, um, I had another dog who passed, and my dog also had a rabbit that I had rescued from work. Name I named it Freeway. Right, they were best friends, and Freeway passed away, and I was devastated. And my dog was upset. My big Great Dane and this tiny little rabbit were best buddies. Um, And when my dog was passing, she was so weak, and her face was on the ground. And she'd do a lot of expression with her eyebrows. They always moved up and down. And we were trying to get her to like, look at us and talk to us, but she was in a lot of pain. And all of a sudden I saw her open her eyes halfway and she lifted her head just a little bit and looked towards the door and her eyes opened like wide. And I said, the rabbit's here. I said, the rabbit or my other dog are here. They're here to get her. Like I knew it because she had not moved the entire time. Wow. And then she passed. I, I appreciate uh, and love you for your honesty and transparency. You know, uh, there there might be some mediums out there that wouldn't even admit that. Yeah, I can't I can't read my my situation because it's too emotional. Oh and yeah, it, well I was crying and I had no idea, but I was like, oh my god, the dog's here. <laughs> it makes perfect sense though how you wouldn't be able to even focus on receiving messages and energy when you're just, you're not, you're not in that place. <laughs> like it makes uh, so much sense. I remember I the doctor talking and I it was just like when you have someone, you, you know, a person who's in the hospital, I just couldn't, all I heard was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't hear a thing. It was just the dog. Oh, and something really interesting, Steve. So the other dog I had, I had a dog named Tess and the one that just passed Piper. They're both great Danes. I'd walk them in the woods every day. Tess has been passed for a good three years now, maybe four, three and a half. The last day I was walking Piper in the woods, I kept thinking there was another dog coming up behind me. And I would, I kept turning around going, we're going to get another dog. Like somebody else must be walking in the woods with their dogs. I could feel a dog. And I finally said to Piper, my God, is like Tess visiting us in the woods today? What's going on? And I'm like, she's here. So I started talking to her. It looked like, you know, the crazy woman in the woods, the crazy cat lady. I was the crazy <laughs> dog lady. I was kind of like, mm. come on, Tess, come on, Pipes. Let's go for a walk. I didn't know you were here. And lo and behold, I think she was just coming back to get her. Mm. Uh, it's comforting, even though I still have a hole. I still miss yeah. it. I brought my dog back. <laughs> yeah. Um I don't even know what to say at that point, but yeah. having been through it, you know, I, I got, I got my cat back. <laughs> so maybe, maybe that will happen to you in another animal and it, because of your energy as I well. Hope so. I hope so. You know, and it's funny that, you know, what you said before about them seeing the other animals, this cat that I'm referring to that I, I truly believe is the other cat that came back. At night, sometimes I'll be just on the couch, on my phone, whatever, and he'll just go make these noises like, and then just like bolt and like run, like he's chasing someone. 
And it's like, are you demented? Like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> like, what is like, I look like, is there something wrong? At first, I thought it was maybe a, a gastro situation, like he ate and maybe it's like something's not right. But then he's done, did it again and did, you know, did it again. And, and it's usually in the evening and he just, it looks like he's chasing someone. Yeah, I'm sure he is. Pay attention. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought it and then, you know, things flip out of your head. But now that we're talking here, I'm going to pay attention. Yeah. And, and you can it, even call call on the cat. You know, I. Yeah. Wolves vibrate at a higher vibration than we do right so i'm told so so does the spirit world hence why we can't see them we're in this third dimensional heavy reality right yes we're alive yes we're here but we vibrate on a certain level when we're laugh when we're when we ha when we're happy when we're doing things that we enjoy we're a little bit higher level we're vibrating higher our energy is more extensive and expansive right instead of contracted and dense animals automatically vibrate at a higher frequency. And so I like to explain to people, if you see a fan, when you have a fan on and the fan is going around really fast, you can't see it, right? It's vibrating at a higher frequency. And that's the whole metaphysical thing. Same as if you see a car going down the street, you can't really see the hubcaps anymore, right? It just looks solid. It's the same thing. So we vibrate at a certain frequency. Animals are a little bit higher. That's why they see spirit a lot easier than we do. And plus it's been conditioned out of us our whole life. Like, what are you nuts? What are you saying? Right, right, right. And, and we've, got, we've got other stuff to worry about that they don't have to worry about. Yep. And we're yeah. not paying attention on that level. We're paying attention to, oh, I have to go pick up my son in an hour. I have to go pay a bill. You know, it's not. Exactly. Yeah. And when you talk about the frequency, I, I guess we can also think of it this way. You listen to the radio frequency you can't see it there the, the wave is there it's hitting the antenna of your radio i assure you if you hear something it's there mm -hmm. uh, which i guess goes back to if you send somebody they might be there because it's being sent we just can't see you know 106.1 megahertz but it's exactly. definitely being transmitted yeah, and, exactly. and what what is frequency it's vibration so in vibration. order to transmit that from the transmitting antenna it's vibrating at, I mean, pick any frequency, 106.1 megahertz, million hertz that fast to get to you. I don't yeah. know, you know, whatever frequencies we are and our pets and everything, but you can't see them, but they're yeah. there. You know what I, I take? I have the haunted iPhone, I call it, because I, I take my phone to the woods and I have a lot, a lot of stuff that comes on my phone and people are blown away. I have pictures of things. I have static. I have, um, I slow it down and I have faces that are unmistakable. People are blown away. I don't want to get rid of my phone, but your phone sees things on a, a faster frequency. That's yep. why we get pictures of ghosts, but we're not seeing them outright. Right. And, our and it works. Correct. It works faster. Yeah. <laughs> well, wow. interested, I'll show you my phone. I'll send you some stuff. I, I want to come to your place and go in the woods. There's something oh, going on. Anytime. In the woods. <laughs> I, I, love, I love taking people. Yeah. I have a lot of, uh, different theories from a lot of people about what what's there but who knows you know what we don't know until we know and correct someday we'll all know i in some way we'll find out what the plan is um how do how do we reach you if somebody you know if this uh resonated in terms of a frequency with somebody how do we connect with you um start a conversation maybe get a reading so you can go to my website which is mediumlea.com and it's medium L E A H dot com, or you can text me directly at 203 623 8144. I try not to answer calls if I get them because I'm usually with people, but I will call you back if you don't feel like texting either. I, I my gut is telling me you're going to hear from Piper. It's Piper, right? Yeah, I, I know I will. Uh, probably in a dream because I get too emotional. Yeah. And that, mm -hmm. you know, and again, that makes total sense. Like it's it, when you can't deal with that, when you're dealing with this, you know, it's just, you can't. I you know. know my brother is the non-believer and he said, I, I never get anything from mom and dad. How come you always, I always dream of them and I know they're real spirit um, visitations. And I said, because you just, 
you can't handle it. And I know he can't. And my son's the same exact way. He just, he's very logical and that's it. <laughs> and there's no, um, you know, he wants to work in law enforcement. It's black and white and that's the way it is. And I get it. And I respect that, you know, um, Tell him I'd not- love to talk to him. I'm not into trying to change people's minds, but if he just opens his minds, uh, mind to other things, he might be a more incredible police officer because uh, I, his intuition will work. I, you know, I also, you know, final thought here. I mentioned my son who's 17 that had the dog situation. And then your son is 17. I never even knew. And he was there. Same thing, right? I, I'm going to ask one question. You don't have to answer, but what's your son's name? Something is telling me I should ask this question. Sam. What is it? Sam. Sam. Okay. My son is Jason. I'm just curious. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm that just feeling really- some- <laughs> Yeah, I would have shut this thing off immediately. I can't deal. Oh, no, right? <laughs> it's weird. Uh, Leah, fantastic talking with you, and um, you know, thanks for sharing everything. And I know you know it brings comfort and closure to to others just by doing that. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having yeah. me. Steve. All thank right, you. we'll talk soon. Okay, definitely. We'll be right Bye. back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.